सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू दी अनादर लेक्चर सो माई नेम इज आशीष एंड आई विश यू ऑल अ वेरी हैप्पी दिवाली टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई विश दिस दिवाली विल ब्रिंग लॉट ऑफ हैप्पीनेस इन यूर लाइफ सो टू स्टार्ट विद दिस लेक्चर दिस लेक्चर इज ऑल अबाउट द डिजाइन कैलकुलेशन विद द सिंगल फेस शिफ्ट इन द डैप कन्वर्टर सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट दी हाउ द डैप कन्वर्टर इज देयर वॉट इज इट्स वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल then we have started to understand how the phase shift is going to be provided between the two bridges then after that we understood in detail about the single phase shift uh, uh, operation and how to derive its power formula what is the current which is going to be flow in the output side so those concept we have already discussed okay now then after that we understood about how the maximum power will flow in the dap converter so in this particular video uh, we are in the next class we are going to jump on the matlab model okay so for understanding the matlab model uh, we should understand how to find out some particular parameters to do the simulations okay so for that particular uh, case i am making this video on the design calculation so initially just a recap of the uh, single phase shift like what are the important formulas we have derived here and all that part we will see and then the design procedure to find out how to find the single uh, how to find out the phase shift between this particular so if for particular power transfer what is the value of the phase shift i should provide then what is the value of the inductor i should take and what is the value of the capacitor i should consider for doing my matlab simulation so all this part we are going to cover in this particular video so let's start with this video so here we are in a different mat uh, window so now uh, we have understood that okay when this uh, dap converter operate with the single phase shift then what is the formula of the i not we get okay i hope so you understood how we derive this particular then from that we derive one particular formula of the p not okay where uh, in terms of the d okay where d is my del upon ts by 2 right that part we already know then we consider here n as uh, n2 by n1 which is equals to 1 by n for this particular case and then uh, what we have understood after that is that uh basically this is the uh, maximum power transfer uh, using the single phase shift how we can achieve and this is the curve we have getting and maximum power is transferred at d equal to 0.5 and what is the formula for the po maximum that we also derive and what should be the maximum value of the inductor we should take when we consider the maximum power that we have understood and we also said that this l max should be maximum value if i wanted to transfer some amount of power uh my l require should be less than this l max okay so this part we have already cover now uh, once we understood all this thing we should understand few more aspect so let us say i wanted to design my uh, dap converter for single phase shift okay so uh, le uh, let us say ki my v1 side voltage is 800 volt v2 is also 800 volt okay my output power requirement is 30 kilowatt and my switching frequency is 100 kilohertz and my n is basically 1 okay n is nothing but what n is my uh, in this case primary to secondary that is one i am considering one is to one uh, turns ratio okay how to come up with this turns ratio so it is just v1 by v2 what is particular so it is uh, v1 is 800 it v2 is my 1200 or something i would consider it as a one is to two okay so that kind of thing we are going to consider okay now uh, how to proceed so if we have this particular data these are my requirement right now with this requirement if i wanted to proceed further how i can go so uh, for that i have just uh, uh, mentioned few points here uh, with this point we will proceed further so we have this particular expression of the p we know p nothing but the v1 v2 divided by 2 and l fs d1 minus d okay now this d is nothing but we have represent is that del upon ts by 2 where del is my phase shifting angle right this is in the phase shifting angle now this ts by 2 represent what okay so ts by 2 represent the 180 degree the square wave formula why i am saying square wave formula as square wave appear across the transform which are phase shifted okay so uh, we know that uh, i have my uh, this kind of uh, wave forms are there uh, like uh, 50% on 50% off so this particular duration is nothing but the ts by 2 right so that is why this ts by 2 and uh, in one particular time cycle if i will t if i will consider t as a 360 degree then definitely ts by 2 is my uh, 180 degree right so that is why i said i have written down here that it represent the 180 degree in the square wave that ts by 2 so as the square wave appear across the transformer which are phase shifted so i can uh, write it i can write it down like this d is equal to del upon pi right now if i re replace this d 
uh, with the del upon pi in this particular expression i am going to get this particular expression so this particular expression is now purely in terms of the delta which is my phase shifting angle okay which will come either in the radian or in the degree so once i have this particular power expression this and that particular power expression are identical to each other only difference i have uh, uh, write it down this particular expression in terms of delta for simplicity because uh, we need to write down and we need to calculate the value of the phase angle phase displacement angle l and c right so for that i need the power expression in this particular form now how we are going to proceed after that so initially what we will do so uh, what requirement i have keep it here my power output i know my v1 i know i my v2 i know fs i know and n i know right now initially we assume that p out is a output maximum power and go for calculation of the initial gas of l so we need to go for initial gas of l so what is l require if i will keep the same p out as 30 kilowatt so i will calculate that l required so it will come some value right now my l actual i will consider with some safety margin okay so safety margin let us say i am considering 0.8 or 0.7 into the l required so l requ what is this l required this l required is with respect to the my 30 kilowatt power which is i have keep it there okay and when i will substitute the value of the v1 v2 8 n fsp out i am going to get some value of the l required now this is the l required value for maximum power right so i am assuming here is that 30 kilowatt is my maximum power but that is not the actual maximum power my maximum power might be something different right but i have to start to find out the value of the l so initially i have considered this particular case now what is my l actual l actual is my safety margin multiplied with the l require now l require i have something let us say uh, x now uh, basically what is l actual i am considering so it is multiplied with the point it so point it or point seven you can consider with the some safety margin so that is your l uh, actual value now you can calculate the maximum power at that particular l actual so this p out maximum is v1 v2 divided by n n fs l actual what it will come it will come less than the uh, it will come greater than the my p actual so my p out is 30 kilowatt and when i will uh, use this particular l actual value and i will calculate the power then that time this will come at uh, some higher value so let us say this is 30 kilowatt so it will come 35 kilowatt 36 kilowatt so this is how we will start the uh, initial gauge okay so i hope so till this point you understood now once we have this particular case and we have some p out maximum value so we know that okay so it is let us say 35 kilowatt it is coming so for, so my l value which is i am going to use in the circuit this is uh, basically responsible for the up to the 35 kilowatt now i wanted to use it for 30 kilowatt so it is a better option right as compared to uh, going for actual value so i have considered l, l required directly p out uh, so if i have considered the 30 kilowatt so for op so uh, what why i am saying this you know that maximum power occur at del equal to 0.5 and it is not always possible to operate my uh, del at is equal to the 0.5 d you know that d is equal to 0.5 we are getting the maximum power but it is not always possible to use uh, d is equal to 0.5 we have to keep that uh, that is the maximum value right so i have to operate somehow lower side so that is why for operating at the some lower side we will do this particular things okay so i have calculate my l actual and what is the maximum power it will come now using this particular formula i will go for calculation of the del so you know the actual basic formula of the my uh, power transfer so my actual power transfer p is equal to what it is equals to the del pi minus del divided by the uh, 2n l actual into fs into the pi square so this formula which we have derived okay the same formula i just rearranged and i marked this particular term as a k okay now i will go for the uh, calculation so i have marked this del pi minus del equal to k and at it is marked as a k and this particular expression i have so i know the value 2n l actual i calculated fs pi square and p p is my now what p is my actual power which is 30 kilowatt i am not taking p maximum because i know that at l actual uh, what is the maximum power i can achieve 37 kilowatt so it is easily possible to go for p calculation it is easily i can achieve the 30 kilowatt right and for that i don't have to operate my uh, d is equal to 0.5 now i can operate it at the some lower value so d uh, how we have uh, defined the relation of the d and delta you know that right now with this i will go for calculating the different values okay so i will just have some quadratic equation then i will solve this and i am getting the two values of delta a and delta b right 
and once I got the value of the delta A delta B, I know that uh, basically I can convert it into the degree and I will get in the two values delta A and delta B because it is a quadratic equation. I am getting definitely two roots. Now I have to choose one which is basically uh, well defined and basically uh, less than 90 degree something sort of right. So this is how actually we proceed and we calculate the things. Okay. So I guess you understood that uh, uh, from this particular small discussion. Okay. This is the uh, power formula which we required. Okay. Then uh, from this particular power formula, uh, we have uh, basically initially guessed some value of the L which is required for that particular power and then by taking some margin factor, safety factor, safety margin, I have calculated the another value of the L which is my L actual and at that L actual, I have calculated the P out and it should come greater than otherwise I have to do uh, basically reduce the safety margin. Okay. Then uh, with this, uh, what is my general expression of power that I have used and I have go for calculation of the delta which is my phase angle, right? So I hope so till this particular point you understood how we have sized the value of the L, how we have sized the value of the delta, okay? How we choose the value of the delta. So these two parameters are very important when you do the open loop simulation, you have to directly put this particular values and it should work at that particular value, right? Now uh, we have understood it. Now how to go for capacitor sizing, right? So before going to the capacitor sizing, so if you only purpose is to transfer the power from V1 to V2, that time only my capacitor is required. Otherwise, if this is not the resistive load, this is a battery, then I don't need the capacitor value. I can, I, I need the capacitor value, but those capacitor value are very small value. They are just for the small ripple filtration. Okay, not for the actual this particular uh, voltage handling, right? So that is the difference. But uh, as of now, we are uh, assuming here it has a resistive load and power is transferred from V1 to this particular V2. That is why we will go for calculation of the C2. So uh, one important thing I wanted to say that there is a various method to calculate of the C2, C value. Okay. But I am uh, using here very fundamental expression which you can use. This is an approximate expression, not the exact value. If you go for hardware calculation, you need to see some uh, basically papers. Okay. I will tell you what are those papers and what, what those paper talks about. But for simulation purpose, you can go with this values. What uh, basically approximately we are going to calculate now. Okay. So let us come back to uh, our discussion on uh, capacitor sizing. So we know that Q is equals to the CV, right? Here V is my V2 because my capacitor is at the V2 side. Now from that, I can write it down delta V is equal to the delta Q by C, right? We can write it down delta V is equal to delta Q by C. And what is my delta Q here? That is equal to I, I delta Q is nothing but the I naught into the TS. So here, assume, what I am assuming here is that over a TS, net charge change, the capacitor must apply to the load is approximately the load change consumption per period. Okay. So very basic expression I am using that whatever charge it will store, it will be uh, uh, basically provided to the load current. So that is a very fundamental uh, expression I am using. So with this, can I write it down? C is equal to delta Q by delta V. And from that, I am getting the one expression of I naught into the TS divided by delta V peak to peak. So here V peak to peak is my V2 into the some particular ripple percent. So assuming the 2 to 5 percent of ripple and you can size the value of the capacitor. So this is the very generalized expression C is equal to I naught divided by delta V peak to peak into FSW. So this is an approximate expression you are getting. Now, once you got this, you uh, use two to three times the value which is coming here and uh, with this particular value, you can do the simulations. Okay. Uh, so it is very approximate expression and uh, uh, I have done this and uh, it will work perfectly fine. Okay. That's why I'm suggesting for simulation purpose, you can go with this. But if you go for the hardware design, uh, there are the different methods to size the value of the capacitor. What are those? So how we define our specification, that is the something uh, defines the value of the capacitor. Now here V1, V2, we have considered uh, some fixed number. So let us say uh, basically V1 has some uh, uh, variation like V1 is uh, ranging from 400 to 800. My V2 is again ranging from 400 to 800. My output power, I am not having the constant 30 kilowatt. I need the power like uh, something uh, sort of uh, let us say sometime 20 kilowatt to 30 kilowatt. This is my range. So that particular type you have to consider the different constraint. Okay. Then you have to derive the value of the D which is responsible for managing all these parameters. Okay. And once you find out the value of the D, 
then you need to go for the c calculation how we will go for the c calculation from the my i not expression you know we we derived the uh, i not expression we have that i not uh, uh, basically a curve so from that i not curve you can calculate you can easily calculate the value of the capacitor so there is a really long process to do that uh, it is a bit of complicated that is why i don't wanted to go there but if you need references or not i can uh, surely provide you uh, these are available and people have done that case as well okay so uh, with this i guess uh, this is all for this video uh, we understood how to design the l how to find out the phase angle delta and uh, basically approximately how what value of the c we can use for our simulation okay so uh, this is all thing we require to go further for the matlab simulation and uh, with this i will conclude this lecture thanks thanks for watching this lecture uh, i will see you in the next class on the matlab simulation we will do in the open loop first on the single phase shift of the dap converter thanks